dear learners we are in the course advanced thermodynamics and combustion module 8 combustion and flames in the last two lectures of the module we have deliberately discussed laminar premixed flame today we are going to discuss about laminar diffusion flame now in this laminar diffusion flame we will touch upon the following topics first one is non reacting laminar jet then jet flame mathematical descriptions here we will not go deep into the governing equations and solutions rather we will focus on the end results of those equations and subsequently we will discuss about the physical aspects the next important point to be discussed is laminar diffusion flame structure and uh, we uh, one of the parameter which is called as a conjured scalar which was introduced in earlier lectures we will try to see what is this uh, what is its significance with respect to jet flame so let us start the first thing uh, uh, to give some brief introduction about non reacting laminar jet uh, we will see that the laminar uh, flame uh, diffusion flames importance will be realized when we are burning jets of fuels so by burning jets of fuel we mean uh, this is something like when the uh, fuel is uh, injected through uh, nozzle for example in a fuel injector in a diesel engines uh, in such uh, those cases what happens there is some uh, diffusion flame is generated so basically diffusion flame when it is generated it means that fuel and air mixer is uh, pre mixed to some extent and uh, and again when the jet comes out uh, it tries to uh, get uh, rest quantity of oxidizers from the air uh, so typical example uh, we can see in a bunsen burner uh, flame the outer cone uh, of this diffusion flame uh, is nothing but your uh, uh, outer cone is nothing but the diffusion flame whereas the inner cone is mainly the premixed flame now when you deal premixed laminar flame uh, the treatment was different now when you deal with uh, 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 diffusion flame uh, then uh, there are some other issues it comes as a jet and uh, the fuel when it comes out from this nozzle it or uh, or fuel injector it tries to spreads and it tries to diffuse with respect to air so all sorts of phenomena that comes uh, into picture and uh, in a actual scenario what happens when the fuel is injected from a nozzle uh, it tries to diffuse within the air and side by side uh, the combustion happens combustion happens means that density of the mixture keeps on changing within this flame structure or within the within the flame domain uh, as a result equivalence ratio also changes but uh, what we are trying to analyze here we will try to see that in a very uh, hypothetical way we view that as if a fuel jet is being injected from a nozzle and it tries to diffuse in the air and during this diffusion process one thing that we are assuming that they are not reacting that is first thing second thing is that uh, during this process they are not reacting by non reacting mean that density do not change during the reaction process uh, so such a things can be model if you assume a constant density reacting mixers uh, so you can choose some a fuel and uh, or air we can choose a fuel in which uh, whose density is also similar to that of air similar number of that of air so such a analysis uh, will tell us without uh, combustion being happened it will tell us that how this jet behavior when it comes out and uh, when it uh, how the jet spreads how the jet diffuses uh, what is its spreading rate and uh, how the mo mole fraction mass fractions or fuel fractions changes along the axial length of the jet all sorts of things is the discussion uh, pattern or discussion of of these lectures 
So, first thing that we say we need to emphasize that laminar diffusion flames are uh, very uh, important and it uh, finds many applications. One application I said in the diesel engine, in some cases in the gas applications in cooking stoves also, we use partially premixed air to provide non shooting operations. Uh, here one more important point is that uh, we intentionally provide a partially premixed mixture to the air just to provide a non shooting that means shoot does not form. That means it has mixing take has taken place earlier and when it sees the oxidizer fuel tries to uh, combustion needs to happen without uh, having any unburnt products. I, as I mentioned the familiar example of a non premixed jet flame is the Bunsen burner outer cone flame. In our study the prime concern of uh, these laminar jet flames is to discuss about the flame geometry uh, with short flames and fuel types. Uh, so, before entering all to, um, such things the uh, important discussion that we need to emphasize here we are going to consider a laminar constant density jets. Constant density jets I mean that in a, in a combustion system so we have a fuel and oxidizers. Normally oxidizer is air and air has certain density at given conditions of pressure and temperatures. So, we are choosing a fuel which whose density is of similar uh, number with respect to air. So, in that way we can say it is a constant density mixtures and uh, assuming that uh, when uh, and if by doing so we are also saying that it is non reacting. Uh, uh, so, that means if you actually simulate the actual behavior density keeps on changing after the during this combustion process because the products are formed. But when you say constant density we assume that it is a non reacting, but we are choosing a fuel such a way that we can get the behavior is analogous to the actual uh, jet flame. So, through this uh, uh, analysis it will be possible to establish the general characteristics of velocity, nozzle fluid concentration fields of laminar jets and understand the Reynolds number dependence of spreading behavior of the jet. Uh, so, we will look into a nozzle fluid concentration diffusions which is identical for equal flow rate which translates to frame length based on the based on the flow rates for a given fuel oxidizer combinations. Let us see how we are the things we are going to discuss. So, what we are considering is a simple case in which a laminar jet of uh, fluid that means fuel which flows into an infinite reservoir of quiescent fluid oxidizer. So, if you look at this particular figure we are uh, seeing that a fuel which is getting injected through a nozzle of radius 2 r uh, of, of diameter 2 r and uh, it uh, goes into uh, uh, it comes as a jet and when it comes as a jet it tries to spread and um, the outer medium is nothing but your uh, a stagnant fluid and in this case it is oxidizer or nothing but air. Uh, so, if you say the nozzle of radius r and it the jet that comes from a fuel jet that comes from a nozzle of radius r and it enters into a still air uh, the uh, velocity profile is assumed to be uniform at the nozzle exits. So, this one assumption we are making seeing that at the nozzle exit that means at x is equal to 0 that is nozzle exit at that point your uh, will have a velocity profile will have uniform and during what happens during this now when jet comes we will have a potential core and that potential core lasts for a distance x c uh, uh, and this is nothing but a initial cone and uh, the uh, tip of this cone uh, uh, is nothing but the axial distance x c from the no exit of the nozzle. Uh, so, this is something to the similar to a fully developed flow in a pipe. So, what we say is that there is exist a potential floor closer to nozzle exit in which the presence of viscous shear and diffusion is not felt that means within this potential core the fuel moves freely without any viscous um, uh, dissipation or uh, diffusion and in fact it has sufficient momentum. Uh, the nozzle fluid ma uh, mass fractions velocity remains unchanged 
from this nozzle exit value and they are uniform. Now, what happens outside? So, what we are looking at? We are saying that if this is the uh, 2R is the uh, diameter of the nozzle and this is the axial distance x which we are looking at and if you take two arbitrary locations x is equal to x1 and x is equal to x2 and if you try to plot what is the value of uh, the ratio one, one is fuel mass fraction and other is the velocity at any x with respect to velocity of at x is equal to 0. So, this at x is equal to 0 this represent v x 0 velocity and at any x we say it is v e exit velocity at any x. And if you try to plot what we can see it starts with 1 that is and and we if you keep on uh, going along the axial distance its value drops. And uh, uh, then another way we can, we can represent that what happens to fuel and what happens to uh, fuel mass fractions at the two different locations. So, at x is equal to x 1 uh, okay, first thing let us see at, uh, at x is equal to 0 uh, we have uh, radius r and it is whether you take the velocity ratios at x v x by v e or fuel mass fractions they are 1. But when we uh, go at any x. So, what happens? This value keeps on changing. So, v x by v e or y f this value monotechnically comes down. So, at may be at x is equal to 1 its value was initially 1, but uh, at x is equal to x 1 it has come down to this value. And even at if we further distance at x is equal to x, x, x 2 this value again further drops. So, there is a monotonically drop in the Mm, velocity ratios, fractions and fuel mass fractions. Uh, so, we will try to quantify how uh, I mean what rate or what is the mathematical background behind, behind this. Another important point needs to be emphasized that when the fuel comes out the at the initial point that is x is equal to x 0 it has a sufficient initial jet momentum and with this jet momentum it tries to penetrate into the air and when it uh, uh, penetrates with with uh, distance its momentum uh, tries to drop. So, these are the reasons that why the velocity ratios drops and even the fuel concentration also drops. Uh, but one thing that we want to see that again uh, if you look at the radial distributions that means at any x is equal to x 1 there is a radial distribution of this uh, fuel jet. So, this radial distribution and axial distribution of this fuel jet we are going to uh, understand how, how they behave. Another important point is the that uh, is similar to the flow through pipe we have a center line velocity and we have velocity at the wall. In a single in the same situations we can say that when its fuel comes out it as a jet and there is a what we can say uh, um, uh, non physical boundary and that boundary call is a jet boundary. So, these are the jet boundaries that um, comes out when the we, we refer this as a jet boundary and of course, there is no existence of a physical boundary as it is there in the pipe flow, but here it is a jet I mean it is a just a physical non-physical boundary uh, across which the, uh, the property informations of the jet as well as the air that tries to match. Uh, and during this uh, while deciding this jet boundary we try to see that uh, in this zone we have uh, mostly it is concentrated with fuel and we have other side of this jet we have mainly with air. And the boundary is, is to be regulated with the with respect to the property value or matching value between this fuel and air. Uh, based on this conditions that how fuel propagates into this medium. So, what we can see is that the fuel uh, I mean air tries to penetrate towards the fuel and fuel tries to diffuse towards air. So, this phenomena uh, actually decides the boundary of the jet. Again while talking about the fuel mass fractions it is known that because of high concentration of the fuel in the center of the jet 
the fuel molecules tries to diffuse out outwards and with respect to Fick's law. Now, effect of moving downstream is to increase the uh, time available uh, for the diffusion to take place uh, and through this process the width of the region of fuel molecule grows with the axial distance and the central line fuel concentration decays in a similar manner with respect to fuel velocity. So, basically both velocity and fuel mass fraction or fuel concentration decays. Now, let us see how you are going to model. What we are trying to say is that momentum of the flow set by any axial location is same as that of momentum issuing from the nozzle exit. So, it is nothing but the um, uh, momentum balance or force balance at any exit it should match. Similarly, mass of the fluid issuing from the nozzle is conserved with respect to mass fractions uh, as unity at the nozzle exit. Another assumption we make that the momentum and specific diffusivities are constant and equal. So, uh, that, uh, that is a momentum of the flow and at the, at the same time there is a diffusion of species um, across the axial as well as the radial directions. Uh, so, uh, the, these two parameters is uh, governed through a non-dimensional number and we call as a scummed number and it expresses the ratio between this momentum and species diffusivity. So, basically we have two species fuel and oxidizer for our analysis and based on that we need to frame the mass conservation, uh, species conservation and axial momentum conservations. Uh, and here the since we are looking at the um, axial distance as versus the radial distributions appropriate coordinate system would be the cylindrical coordinates. So, based on that the three equations were derived here we have only axial velocity dou v by x dou, dou x plus 1 by r into dou r b r by d r. So, v x and v r is nothing but the axial velocity and radial velocity. Similarly, we have axial momentum equations and we have species conservation equations. Side by side we also define the mass fractions of fuel and oxidizers and here we also have another equation which is which another number scummed number S c is defined by mu nu by d where nu is the viscosity and d is the uh, diffusion coefficient. Now, uh, let us see how we understand this boundary conditions. So, basically there are there are two things one is this is central line and this is at x is equal to 0 and um, and central line means it, it is r is equal to 0. So, we are looking r in this direction and we are looking at x in this direction. So, this is x and this is r. So, what happens? at central line r is equal to 0, we have v r at central line is 0 corresponding its uh, v x uh, d v x by d r is also 0 and mole fraction is also 0 differentiation of d d y f by d r is 0 because it is a fixed value. At r is equal to very high means very larger radius means we are if you are looking at sufficiently larger radius fluid is stagnant. So, as if there is no fuel present. So, under those conditions your V x at r is equal to infinity is 0 and Y f also at r is equal to infinity is 0. And again at the jet exit, jet exit means at, this at x is equal to 0, uh, we have uh, two possibilities either uh, we can r less than r or r can be greater than r. So, accordingly we have exit velocity V or exit velocity when r greater than 0 is equal to 0. So, this also can be interpreted for fuel fractions as well. So, fuel concentration at the y f r, r less than, than equal to 0 is y f e that is exit concentration of fuel fractions and beyond r greater than 0 its value is 0. All another point that needs to be emphasized that momentum of the jet at any x. So, at any x is defined by j is equal to twice pi rho into v square into r dr and which has to be integrated from 0 to infinity and that has to be equalized with respect to momentum jet momentum at x is equal to 0 that is initial jet momentum. Similarly, the fuel mass fractions has to be equated 
uh, fuel mass has to be can be calculated with respect to its value at x is equal to 0. So, this is the very basic bottom line through which these equations needs to be solved and ultimately we are not going to into derivations for this, but what we are going, going to find is the solutions for this. Uh, uh, so, while talking about the solutions, we are talking in terms of uh, ratios. First ratio is the non-dimensional non axial velocity distribution that is V x by V e. So, I mentioned that V e is the exit velocity, V x is the velocity at any x. So, if you say this is uh, r x is equal to 0, we are talking about V x at any x and that is a function of uh, two parameters that is non dimensional uh, axial location that is x by r and other parameter that is known as similarity parameters. Why there is what is the importance of similarity parameter? Because we are looking at the velocity distributions as well as the fuel mass fraction simultaneously. So, the similarity parameter that controls both the parameters simultaneously is defined by zeta and this zeta is nothing but is correlated with respect to viscosity r by x and jet momentum at the initial momentum rho e and uh, the and this with this similarity parameters we try to derive the expressions for uh, the non dimensional axial di di distributions uh, for velocity and fuel mass fractions so if you replace, if you see this e expressions here we have uh, one equations uh, they have if you see both the expressions one similar sim, some solution is that they their expressions uh, are uh, almost same or or same so that is the reason if you can see the decay for velocity distribution and fuel mass fractions almost are exactly same in nature and from these equations, uh, we can find out the central line velocity as a uh, function of Reynolds number and um, axial axial locations. We can also find out the central line mass fractions, which is typically needs to be the highest, and with with x as well as r, they are going to decay. Another term, Reynolds number, that is calculated based on the radius of the jet rho e v e r by mu. And we also know the initial momentum of the, of the jet because you know the exit conditions uh, of exit conditions of density and velocity and we also know the uh, radius of the nozzle. Uh, so, from this you can find the non dimensional form of velocity ratio and fuel mass fractions. But however, when deriving the solutions it is always taken care it is valid far from the nozzle for these conditions. But however, uh, it gives a more or less similar physical nature of the actual uh, situations uh, of jet plane. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this particular plot shows the non-dimensional center line velocity res with respect to axial distance. So, we are looking at the axial distance x and it is dependence with V x O by V e. V x O by V e means uh, at v, this location is V x O and V e is any location that ratio x that non dimensional ratio. So, this ratio is plotted against axial distance. We see that uh, when uh, when the Reynolds number is increased when the Reynolds number is increased uh, what happens the decay is uh, okay in other words I am saying the decay is more rapid when the Reynolds number is small. That means, if you come back the other directions instead of going off, if you come back from decreasing order of Reynolds number, the decay is faster. Whereas, decay is slower because you can see the distance uh, decay is at a very faster rate may be 10 times, uh, 100 times, 1000 times. So, if you say that lower Reynolds number of jet has uh, higher rapid velocity decay and this be, this is occurs because the relative importance of initial momentum becomes smaller in comparison with the uh, uh, viscous shearing action.
The next parameter that uh, we are looking at is the jet spreading rate and the spreading angle. So, we define this uh, uh, jet spreading rate with respect to jet half width. So, what does this mean that if you plot the non dimensional velocity with respect to radius that means, along this uh, radial profile we find that at one particular locations that is r 1 by or z half width we will find at uh, r half where this value this ratio value drops from uh, um, 1 to 0.5 means the ratio of z half width to the z axial distance is referred as z spreading rate and this z half width is defined as the radial locations at which the z velocity has decayed to half of its central line value. So, uh, once we know this z spreading rate, we can find the z spreading angle is the angle which tangent is the z spreading rate. That things we can represent in max mathematical form as z spreading rate is equal to r half by x that is by definition it is defined by this and this is equal to 2.97 r e to the power minus 1. So, this says that if your Reynolds number is high then jets are narrow while the low Reynolds number jets are normally wide. So, this information gives the uh, how a jet spreads in the oxidizer or how, how the fuel spreads in the oxidizer. The other important aspects of a laminar diffusion frame um, is uh, to find the length of the flame. So, if you look at the actual uh, scenario, uh, we will see that we have uh, different zones and that different zones normally represent the, uh, the concentration of fuel and air ratio. One some location that means toward in the vicinity of the potential core or towards the towards the nozzle side I can say towards the nozzle side we can find equivalence ratio is more and as and when we go along x we will see that equivalence ratio uh, keeps on coming down. So, when it keeps on coming down it means that we are reaching towards more towards the uh, air zone and one particular and in fact uh, the flame surface uh, or what you say the zone is normally decided by a this by a surface that normally tries to see the uh, regions in which air and uh, uh, fuel they have equal the air and fuel properties match. And one particular point or one particular flame zone where we can find there is a phi is equal to 1. So, it means that at the entire contour of this flame zone uh, or entire uh, locations on this flame zone if you calculate the equivalence ratio they are they are equal which means that complete oxidation or complete combustion has taken place on this particular flame surface. Now, if you look this particular surface it is not a case of complete combustion in this zone we will find there are some fuel particles still they are not burnt and in and when you go move beyond this flame zone where or phi is equal to 1 we will find there are the, we, we have sufficient oxidizer, but there is no fuel to be burnt. Uh, so, uh, this mismatch tells us that there is a particular length what we call as x is equal to L f that is the length of the flame and that length of the flame is calculated as axial distance from this exit of this nozzle and that x is equal to L f and that is nothing but the flame zone where uh, which is defined that there is more uh, beyond this length, length which means that beyond this length there are enough oxidizer in the surroundings to burn the fuel completely. But below this length 
there is not enough oxidizer. And normally when you talk about this uh, flame surface, it is nominally defined as the contour where fuel and oxidizer meet in the stoichiometric proportions or in other words we say that flame surface is the locus of points where the equivalence ratio is equal to unity. So, this is the catch mark point where which needs to be known and we for every uh, uh, lam flame situations or every laminar diffusion flame we need to calculate um, uh, this flame length. Uh, so, this flame uh, this contour is normally defined by these expressions in terms of equivalence ratio that is phi that is r is equal to 0 and x is equal to uh, L f is equal to 1. Now, while talking about this flame uh, length, we will also have flame width. There are two phenomena that takes place here. Uh, we talked about flame length. Let us talk about what is flame width. Uh, flame width means if you, uh, if you go along uh, the length of the flame, we will find the effect of buoyancy. So, basically the buoyancy accelerates the flow that causes the flow to narrow. So, when the fuel gets pushed off towards the air, so the flame tries to be narrow. At the same time, when the flow becomes uh, the, the when there is narrow flame, the it increases the fuel concentration gradient and enhances the diffusions. So, basically fuel tries to diffuse outwards at the same time buoyancy also pushes up. So, the buoyancy pushes up and fuel also tries to diffuse outwards. So, this combined two effects gives such kind of surface and that surface we call this as a flame surface and one particular surface at we can find for phi is equal to 1 and for that phi is equal to 1 we can find a particular x that at what x it appears. So, that is nothing but x is equal to L f. So, the length of the flame is decided based on these two parameters one is buoyancy other is the diffusion. Another significant part of uh, this flame is uh, what we can say um, suit formations. So, formation of suit in a flame. Uh, we already told that when you see the flame surface below this phi is equal to 1 this is basically all the surface of equivalence ratio more than 1. So, that means they are rich in fuel, but they do not find sufficient oxygen or oxidizers. So, this causes that there are some unburnt fuel particles that remains. Now, when we say uh, when you look at this particular figure, uh, these unburnt particles uh, leads to the formation of soot and we call this as a soot. Uh, formations and this suit formation normally initiated at the uh, exit point of this nozzle. So, in the maybe it starts with a potential core and because of this momentum of this flow and the, the suit particles tries to uh, move up. So, basically through this process what we see is that we have suit particle inception zone, then there is a zone what we call as suit particle growth zone and the suit particles tries to oxidize and if this if they are if they are sufficiently oxidized there is no further possible this is, this is a normal convention that there is even if during its propagation the fuel particles is has oxidized now if at all for variety of region if it does not then what happens we will have a formation of suit wings in this suit wing that we will find a some zone at some flame surface we will find there is a suit breakthrough that means these suit particles try to break and that when uh, they try to break and we re normally refer this as a smoke. So, depending on the fuel type, fuel residence type, not all the fuel, fuel gets oxidized during its journey from high temperature regions. So, many a times suit wings are formed and which is the, which is refers as breaking of suits through the flame. The suit that breaks through the flame is referred as the smoke. And, la and last point that I need to emphasize that from this understanding uh, or understanding of uh, our analysis or mathematical um, expressions, one can find out the length of the flame for which 
phi is equal to 1 as uh, approximately equal to the 3 by 8 pi into q f divided by d f into y stoichiometric, where q f is nothing but the initial volume flow rate and that is decided by the initial jet velocity and uh, area of the nozzle jet or nozzle port. Then d stands for species diffusivity, b he is the velocity of the fuel at the port exit and y f is nothing but the stoichiometric fuel mass fractions. So, it clearly tells that length of the flame is in uh, directly proportional to the volume flow rate and inversely related to the fuel mass fractions. The other important aspect that I need to emphasize is the conserved scalar. So, the conserved scalar is a quantity or uh, which is normally used in all types of uh, combustion problems which says that uh, any scalar quantity that remains conserved throughout the, uh, the, uh, the combustion process. One such parameter is nothing but the mixture fractions and the uh, fraction of uh, mass or mole fraction of the component which originates from the fuel and which remains con conserved throughout its journey in the combustion process. So, uh, based on that what we see is that uh, if you look at a flame sheet, we can have uh, three distinct locations, one was on the flame surface where f is equal to stoichiometric value. At the, that point your, um, your mass fractions is almost exactly entire combustion has happened and y products are uh, is equal to 1. And when you within this flame, we will find there is a some mass fraction of the fuel as some products. Outside the fuel, we will not find fuel, we will find oxidizer and products. So, there is a misbalance between uh, the, the flame surface or flame sheet inside the flame and outside the flame. And distribution of temperature and uh, mass fractions can be represented in this manner as it is it's a very clear understanding that uh, temperature keeps on increasing till stoichiometric value again further drops with respect to fuel fraction uh, fuel mass fraction and the if you see the mixture fraction value with respect to the mass fraction y then for oxidizer or fuel and products then it can be plotted at that fuel stoichiometric value its value is mixture fraction is 0. Uh, so, a complete understanding uh, we can make uh, what happens. Uh, so, by definition we can say a mixture fractions is the fractions that uh, of the mass of the material that originates in the fuel stream divided by mass of the mixtures. This is by definitions. So, based on that we have uh, fuel fractions, we have the uh, fuel stoichiometric value. When 1 kg of fuel mixes with mu kg of oxidizer to form mu plus 1 kg of products. So, we have three distinct zones, one is inside the flame and uh, under that conditions uh, based on this uh, relations, we can find within the flame what is the mass fraction of the fuel, what is the mass fraction of the oxidizer and what is the uh, mass fraction of uh, products. Similarly, outside the flame we can find uh, what is the mass fraction of uh, um, fuel, oxidizer and products and that relations we can represent in terms of stoichiometric values. So, this is all about I have uh, uh, discussions with respect to laminar jet flames. So, based on our understanding let us try to solve uh, uh, the some uh, numerical problems with respect to jet flame. So, the first problem that talks about uh, we have a jet of ethylene that means ethylene jet that comes out of a nozzle and, uh, and that nozzle diameter that 2 r is 8 mm and it and the ambient conditions that comes out is air and air condition is 300 Kelvin and pressure is 1 atmosphere. So, under these conditions we need to find out the spreading angle and two parameters basically we need to find the spreading angle other is we have to find the axial location where 
at which the z central line mass fraction drops to the stoichiometric value and all these things we need to find out for two velocities one is 0 0.08 meter per second other is 0 0.008 meter per second so basically we know ve1 as 0 0.08 meter per second and another value is ve2 we have 0 0.008 meter per second for these two conditions we need to find out jet spreading angle and axial locations so let us start the solution the first thing that we need to check whether it is a constant density or not. So, constant density I mean if you look at ethylene, so ethylene is C 2 H 4 and its molecular weight is above is 28 and molecular weight for air is 20, approximately 29. So, more or less we can say a constant density situation may be assumed and again it is a non reacting uh, with the, when you say constant den density a non reacting also will have similar resemblance. Uh, so, considering this that whatever mathematical treatment we have done for this study we can make use of that. Uh, so, uh, first thing that uh, one need to calculate is what happens to spreading angle. So, spreading angle is defined as alpha and uh, that alpha is nothing but tan inverse r half by x and this r 1 by 2 by x is nothing but 2.97 by r e j. So, this information you require the first thing that you need is what is Reynolds number. So, Reynolds number for the first case we can write rho v e 1 r by mu. So, mu is given 102.3 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton second per meter square and rho, rho we can find out for air for this atmospheric pressure and 300 Kelvin this can be assumed to be 1.15 kg per meter cube. So, we know rho uh, B e 1 first case is 0 0.08 r is twice r is 8 mm. So, R means it is 4 mm. So, putting this value we can write 1.14 into 0 0.08 into 0 0.004 divided by 102.3 into 10 to the power minus 7. So, this number is 3.35.65. Now, second case R e 2 will be rho V e 2 R by mu. So, this number would be just uh, scaling difference. So, it will be 3.565. Now, when you have this we can find for the alpha 1 first case would be tan inverse uh, 2.97 divided by 35.5. 65. So, this angle is 4.75 degree and alpha 2 second case will be tan inverse 2.97 by 3.565. So, this number is 39.8 degree. So, we see that the uh, low velocity jets means low Reynolds number jets implies higher spreading angle. Okay. So, this information we get that is also naturally true and the second part of the discussion would be we need to find out the spreading angle and axial location of the jet central line mass fraction when the jet drops to the uh, stoichiometric value. So, for that 
we need to find out the expressions what uh, when you say y f stoichiometric and that is equal to y f o that is at this x is equal to 0. That relations we have if you recall that is 0 0.375 r e j into x by r and to the power minus 1 and this x this will give you x is equal to 0 0.375 uh, r e j divided by y f stoichiometric uh, into r. So, basically we need to find what is the y stoichiometric values all the other parameters is known r is 0 0.004 m r e j we know r e j r e we have r e j 1 and r e j 2. So, what to find this stoichiometric value we have to recall this fundamental equation C x h y plus a o 2 plus 3.76 n 2 gives rise to x c o 2 plus y by 2 h 2 o plus 3.76 a n 2. So, from this for ethylene we write it is C 2 H 4 that means x is equal to 2 y is equal to 4 and a is equal to x plus y by 4 and that number is 3. So, when you know all these things we can write the stoichiometric value that is air fuel ratio stoichiometric is equal to m a r by m fuel and that expression is 4.76 a molecular weight of air by molecular weight of fuel. Then um, uh, from this uh, we can find out uh, the number as we know air and fuel molecular weight uh, we can find out this number as uh, 4.76 into a is 3 into 28.85 divided by 28 or simply we can write 29. So, this number will be 14.7. So, y stoichiometric would be 1 by 14.7 plus 1. So, this number is 0 0.0637. Once we have the stoichiometric value then we can find the two parameters one is x 1. x 1 would be 0 0.375 into R e j 1, R e j 1 is 35.65 divided by 0 0.0637 into R is 0 0.004. So, this number would be 0 0.84 meter. Similarly, x 2 would be 0 0.375 into 3.575 that is r j r e j 2 into 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.0637 this would be 0 0.084. So, it says that fuel concentration decays to same value for low velocity jet with respect to high velocity jet. Okay. And next is uh, the same problem, but it is tuned in a different way saying that here we are looking at uh, data that is given is B E 1 which is 0 0.008 uh, 
meter per second twice r is 1 is 8 mm. Now, what is required is we have to find out the edge diameter of another no, of the nozzle which is required to maintain the same flow rate. Flow rate used to be remain same, but exit velocity. So, V e 2 has to be increased 10 times, 10 times means 0 0.08 meter per second. So, here the exit velocity is increased by changing the radius of the nozzle. Uh, so, for that what remains same is the flow rate, volume flow rate. So, we can say flow rate Q remains same that is V e 1 into A 1 that is equal to V e 2 into A 2. So, from this expression we can find out a relations that V e 1 into pi r 1 square is equal to V e 2 into pi r 2 square. So, this means r 2 is equal to V e 1 by V e 2 uh, into r 1, r 2 square is this V e 1 by V e 2 into r 1 square. So, we know r 1, we know V e 1 by V e 2. So, from this r 2 can be found out as 1.2 mm. So, this gives twice r 2 or diameter of the nozzle, exit diameter of the nozzle as uh, 2.4 mm. So, to maintain this flow rate the exit diameter is has to be 2.4 mm. Now, for this situation we need to find out the axial location for which fuel mass fractions drops to stoichiometric value. So, we again for this nozzle we need to find out what is Reynolds number of the jet. So, it is rho V e 2 into R 2 divided by mu. So, rho is 1.14 or 1.15, V e 2 is 0 0.08, R 2 is uh, 1.0.0012 divided by mu, it is 102.3 into 10 to the power minus 7. So, this number is 10 approximately 10.7. 10 then we can recall that expression x is equal to 0 0.375 r e j divided by y f stoichiometric into r. So, this number would be 0 0.375 r e j d 10.7 divided by x uh, stoichiometric value is 0 0.0637 into r, r is in this case is 0 0.0012. So, x is approximately 0 0.075 meter. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, this is almost close to the previous cases of x value is 0 0.084 meter. So, this is all about uh, the discussions for today. Thank you for your attentions. Mm -hmm.